Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. Today we're talking about stems from Native Instruments. Now this is a new file format designed for DJing which lets you get tracks or create your own tracks which have got basically four different component parts in there. I'll break it down really quickly to start with what we've actually got. So this is one that I assembled a multi-track, sent it off to Native Instruments for the purpose of this demo video and they've sent it back as a stem file. So we've got one track in one deck. On my right hand deck here, deck B, I've got this playing we can see on the second stem. This is my music basically I've got on here and I can fade that in and out. Then if we skip forward in the track a little bit, we get into, I've got a bongo line there on the third one. And go a bit further still, we've got a break beat on number one. And then on number four, let's throw it into a loop now. I've just got some hi-hats on there. So I can blend between those. So I can bring in my bongo line, bring in my break beat. And bring in the music. So as you can see, it all just kind of flows very simply. It's really just, a, it's like an extreme version of EQ. You know, if you think back, back in the day, DJ mixers didn't have per channel EQ. You had a master EQ to like shape the sound overall. but. EQ started to be used as like a performance tool. So we would, for example, take out the bass um, and that would let us mix in with another track with strong bass. We could use it like that or we could take out the top end and mix in like that. You know, kill switches and EQs came along for each channel and that's a thing that we have now. This is like a real hardcore version of that because you're not just killing one frequency. So for example, if I kill out this break beat that we've got over here, I'm not just killing out the bass or the treble, I'm killing out all the frequencies within that break beat. So a producer can put together a track, you can have an a cappella on one, um, the vocal on there, you can have the hi-hats on the right hand side, you have your bass line in here. You, there's lots of different options. Obviously it is restricted to four channels, um, but there's quite a good reason for that in terms of file size and so on. But it's, you know, straight away out the gate, I'm gonna tell you, this is really fun to play with. You know, I bought uh, about 40 odd uh, different tracks to actually play with as well. I've been all around Beatport and track source and all that and just raided all the tracks that look like they might be interesting. It's mostly house and techno right now. Um, there is some drum and bass in there and stuff as well, like Ram Records and so on. But yeah, it's mostly house and techno. And all the stuff I've played with, it's just been really fun. You're just dropping stuff in and out. You've got two stem files running uh, on two different decks. You know, I'm using the F1 and the D2 and I can have the bass line from one running while I've got the the you know, the drums from another one. It's really good fun straight away and anyone who's been DJing for a while will see the potential in that, I'm sure, without a doubt. Let's just show you around what actually is inside a stem file. Let's just have a look at that. Now, we'll just crack open one of the ones we've got here as our demo ones. You'll see it's a .mp4 file, which you might know from video files, but basically that's just a QuickTime container. And in this case, it contains different AAC audio streams. So we're just gonna open that with QuickTime Player 7. So you can see, I've got the pro version, so we can open up and I can see what's exactly inside it. So we've got the main track itself, that's the overall track, as mastered as it should be. Then we've got two, three, four, and five, and those are our four stems within that file. But you can see that one's ticked there, that's enabled soundtrack one, that is the overall track. If I just play this in QuickTime Player, or in iTunes, or in Serato DJ, or in a CDJ, then that will just play the main track and the four stems within that file will be ignored completely by the software. There's then obviously metadata and stuff within the file which tells Traktor what to do with the four stems. So for example, when you actually create a stem file, you've got like a little bit of compression and limiting you can add on the final stage of it and Traktor will know what amount to apply because you've told it in the metadata of the file. So that's why you can't just kind of assemble your own, you have to actually have the stem creator tool, which is not available yet. And that's a real sort of disappointment for me. Um, I would have loved to see that launch on day one because, you know, quite frankly, that is what is gonna make this come alive. And I think the real kind of creative possibility for this is when you get into creating your own stems. For example, recently there was a video from UK DJ Woody who's absolutely just pushing the limits of turntablism all the time. And he did this polyphonic scratching where he had three channels basically one turntable controlling three decks in Serato DJ, and he's mixing between those with the up faders, and he's got a beat running on the fourth channel. Now, you could have that within a stem file, 
you know, so rather than going to the, the trouble of actually controlling three, three different virtual decks with one turntable, you can have one file, one virtual deck with four different streams in it. So you could be turning up and down your different parts of your polyphonic scratch using that idea that he's kind of developed and worked on, but within one virtual deck with one turntable controlling it or one CDJ, whatever it's going to be. So there is so much potential for yeah, turntablism and that kind of stuff. And the thing is, it does require, obviously that requires a bit of prep work, but when you're actually doing it, it's so simple to do. You know, you can see with this Control D2 here, I've got the four stems on the screen. Uh, I can see what's coming in, what's going on with it. I can use the Control F1 as well. If we just turn that one over to the Control F1, you can see I've got the VU meters replicated on the pads. You've got the faders, you've got a filter for each channel. You can send each channel to effects or not depending on what you want to do. So I've now got a tape delay just on the music side. All the other tr all the other channels when they kick in will not have the effects on. So you can really get into it. And if you've got an F1 knocking around, which a lot of people have, I certainly had a bought it, never got into remix decks. Now I've got a real use for this F1 all of a sudden. So it's, it's really simple to play with because you are just playing with that one deck. There's no clips to worry about, no loops to worry about. If you loop this deck, it loops all four stems at once. And that in some ways is more restrictive than a remix deck, but it's so much more natural as a DJ to work with. You know, if you really want to get into looping um, loads and loads of different samples and layering, that kind of stuff, then really Ableton's probably the way to go. You know, that to me doesn't feel like the kind of DJing that I do. So for me, this is far more intuitive than remix decks or Ableton, anything like that. This is just fits into my DJ workflow much more easily. So. It's not perfect. Um, it's great having the display of all four stems there on your Control D2 or your Control S8. You don't have that on the screen in the software. You know, you look at the screen there that I've got running, that's stem files in both decks. There's no way to tell even that they are stem files playing right now. From looking at the virtual decks themselves, there's nothing to tell you those are stem files, um, which is a little bit frustrating. Obviously that's gonna require a fairly massive upgrade to Tractor's graphics engine from the sound of it. Um, so we're talking like a major version down the line. That's gonna be a 3.0 kind of thing, but it is something that Native Instruments wanna do, so I'm, I'm glad they're on board with that. Now, the first thing, literally the first thing I saw when this was announced was a load of producers saying, hey, you know, if you just have four channels and you sum them together with a bit of compression and EQ, that's gonna sound nothing like the original master track. And uh, you know what? They're right, it doesn't actually. It sounds very different. For example, there's a stem file available of Nine Toes, Finder, the house record, which I really, really love. It's one of my favorite tracks from the past two years. I still play it all the time. I know that track inside out. I know exactly how it sounds. And A, B testing them between the stem file with all the channels up full and the original track. There is a difference there. For sure there is, it sounds different. Um, so what I would suggest is you think of a stem file as a remix, think of it as a different version of that track. It's not the original track, it will sound a little bit different. It's just a remix though. So that's cool, you know, we all like remixes and having the advantage of the stem files, I'm super happy that I've got the original Finder, um, Nine Toes Finder and I've got the stem version because now I can mess with both together. Um, or I could just use the stem version and just use the bits that I like as the track's getting older. There's so many options with it it's just really, really cool, and I, I'm not fussed about the sound at all. It, it's not bad, it just sounds different, and you will have to, if you're a producer, you'll have to approach the way that you master the track in a slightly different way when you get it into the Stem Creator tool. The fundamental question is this, is Stems a success? The answer to that is, if you're a Tractor user, hell yeah it is, because it's free. It's in Tractor 2.9. If you've already got that software, it's in there. You can go and buy some stems files for a little bit more money than a normal track and you can play with them straight away. You can use a third party controller, anything you've mapped for a remix deck will work automatically or you can remap and do a controller yourself. Works with the D2, the S8, the F1, which is cool because you know my F F1 was gathering dust. It really was, I've hardly used it. It's been on this back wall here for like eight months. <laughs> you haven't used it in that time. So it's really cool to see the F1 getting a lot of use all of a sudden and it works really nicely with the F1 as well. Um, 
so yeah, for a tractor user, it's a no-brainer, right? And as soon as the STEM Creator tool comes out, if you're familiar with you know doing your own kind of multi-track stuff, definitely get on that and make some of your own. Get creative, do some battle weapons, that kind of stuff. It's all good. Um, whether it'll be adopted by your other software manufacturers like Pioneer and Serato, I'm not sure. Uh, it's not just a case of adding four faders and supporting the format. You know, there's a bit more to it. There is this level of limiting and compression that goes on in the background, determined by the metadata in the file, and that's not a trivial thing to add to a bit of software for each deck. So I don't know, we'll see. If the format really takes off, if people really demand it, I'm sure those companies will take it on and run with it but it's just gonna be one of those chicken and egg situations. We've gotta see, will a big label, you know, DJ Mustard's next production, will that be available in a STEMS format? Probably not, um, because you know, those massive, huge major labels aren't really bothered about your club DJs. You know, radio may be at a push, but they're not fussed if you have a version that you can mess with in the mix while you're at the club, because they, they don't really care. You know, that's not their market. Um, your house and techno labels, break beat, drum and bass, all that, those kind of labels, I'm sure, will start to support it even more. It's not a lot more work for them to make a STEMS version. They can charge a little bit extra, you know, three, four bucks as opposed to two bucks. So that's, you know, a significant bit of income in a time when labels don't make a lot of money. And I'm pretty sure very soon we will have producers, once that STEM creator tool is out there, we'll have producers and remixers coming to us at DJ City. And they'll say, hey, look, I've got my new remix. I've got the MP3 for you, but I've also got the STEMS version and I'm sure that a DJ City will be looking to put those out as well and, and share those and see if there is the interest there because yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of DJs, certainly anyone who uses Tractor is gonna to wanna to get on stems. I'm pretty sure of that, it's, it's really dope. It's not perfect, we do need the split waveform in the display, you know, on the main monitor you need that split waveform, that needs to come in the new version of Tractor and I would like to see the ability to play that original file in Tractor alongside the stems, you know, choose which you want to do, stems or the regular file, when you load it to the deck. That would be a good option to have. But on a basic level, it's super fun, super creative, and I'm very excited to see where it goes. That is for sure. Thank you very much for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon.